In this video, we'll be solving a shear center problem. The question asks us to find the location of the shear center for this thin walled channel. First, we want to draw the Q distribution diagram on this cross section. Now, in order to draw the Q distribution, we need to find the shear flow. Since this is a C channel, there are only two possible directions, directions the shear can flow. This way, and this way. Since we're not given any other information about the beam, we can just pick a direction and assume that the flow is going from the bottom up. The top and bottom Q distribution will be linear because the shear stress will act horizontally. And this middle section will be nonlinear because the shear stress acts vertically. We'll label this bottom portion Q1, the middle Q2, and the top Q3. Now we can write out our shear flow equation, which is Q equals VQ over I. Let's start off by finding I, which is the moment of inertia. We can split up this channel into three components, the top portion, the middle portion, and the bottom portion. We'll start by calculating the moment of inertia in this middle section. This middle section is also known as the web of the channel, so we'll call this I web. We'll use the center point of the web, which lies on the neutral axis, as reference when we calculate our moment of inertia. This section is already symmetric along the neutral axis, so we can simply use the moment of inertia equation for a rectangle. So I web is simply equal to TH cubed over 12, where T represents the base and H represents the height. Now let's find the moment of inertia for the top portion. Since this section isn't symmetric along the neutral axis, we have to add a times d squared to our moment of inertia, where a is the area of the piece, and d is the distance from the center of the area to the neutral axis. We know that the moment of inertia here is bt cubed over 12 plus the area, which is b times t, times the distance squared, which is h over 2 squared because the distance from the neutral axis to the center of this section is h over 2. Since we know the top portion and the bottom portion are the same, we can just multiply the top portion by 2. In this case, I'm just going to rewrite the equation out for i bottom, which, is, which we know is the same as i top. Now that we have found the moment of inertia for each section, we can add them all together to give us the moment of inertia of the entire shape. This term here will be super small because since t is already small, if we raise it to the power of 3, it will equal to nearly 0. So we can assume t here will equal to 0. We can then simplify our, our equation to give us th cubed over 12 plus b times t times h squared over 2. We can then factor out t times h squared over 2 to give us this final equation where our moment of inertia is equal to th squared over 2 times h over 6 plus b. Now that we have our moment of inertia, we can find our resultant forces. We can use the shear flow equation, which is q equals bq over i. We know that q is equal to a prime times y bar. So we can substitute that into our shear flow equation, which will then be equal to Q equals V times A prime times Y bar divided by I. We will treat V as a constant. Now, when we analyze Q1, which is the bottom portion, A prime is equal to X times T, where X is some length across the section and T is the width, multiplied by Y bar, which is H over 2, because it is the distance from the neutral axis to the center of this portion, Since we already found I, which is the moment of inertia, we can plug it into the Q1 equation. After simplifying the equation a bit, we get Q1 is equal to V times X over H times H over 6 plus B. Let's replace the shear flow on this diagram with its corresponding force resultants. Now, to find F1, we can integrate the shear flow. So let's integrate Q1.
we can take everything but x out since these are all constants. Now we have a simple integral. An f1 will look like this. Instead of integrating to find f1, we can also find the area of the q distribution to get f1. So the area of the q1 distribution is base times height divided by 2, because this is a triangle. So the base would be v, and the height would be q max, which is the maximum shear flow at this section. To find q max, we can take our q1 equation that we found earlier, which is this. We know that the shear flow max at this section occurs at b, because if the shear flow is going towards the left, the right end would be zero, meaning the left side would be the max since it, since it is increasing linearly. So we can replace x with b, and this will be our q max. Keep in mind that b is the length for the bottom portion. Now that we found q max, we can substitute this into the area equation. After simplifying everything, we get this for f1. As you can see here, this produces the same answer as the integration method. Now we have to solve for e, the distance to the shear center. We will let s be the shear center, v be the shear force, and e be the distance to the shear center. From the previous video, we already solved for e, but we'll do it again in this example. So we want to take moment about point s, which is our shear center. We will assume counterclockwise to be positive. So when we write out our moment equation, we get this. We know that f1 and f3 are equal, and v and v2 are also equal. So we can simplify the equation and isolate for e where we get E equals to F1 times H over V. Now that we have our shear distance equation, we can find the location of the shear center by substituting F1 in. After substituting and simplifying, the location of the shear center is B squared divided by H over 3 plus 2B. That is the final answer. In next week's video, we'll go over the torsion formula.